terrific building that. Well, now, I've never been too convinced by the many attempts to mix rock and roll with Christianity. At best, it's always seemed a pretty unsuccessful combination, and at worst, a contradiction in terms. But with evangelists being in the news at the moment, it's not very often that someone who's lived through a life that's included crime and violence ends up preaching the gospel like this. Well, if you ever find you vote away, take my way, that's a highway, that's the best. Take a dip on the straight to say. Well, if I from Chicago to LA, what a do? I think there's, there's different people who are working in the ministry, um, people who are ministers inside a church, and people who are ministers outside the church. I am outside the church. A conventional priest, I would never, in fact, see many on the street um, talking to, to kids or punks or prostitutes or glue sniffers or, or people in trouble with the police. I decided that I wanted to to help the type of people that I used to be. And uh, I decided that it was right for me to go to Bible college for three years, trying to be a minister. And I went to a college in Dorking in Surrey. And uh, I met my wife, actually, um, at a minister's conference in Clacton. And she comes from Bristol. In fact, she comes from Kingswood. And uh, that's basically how I got to Kingswood. You, you want to get a job, yeah? <laughs> no? Want to get married? Yeah, you do. You're You're fine. Fine. <laughs> I had my fortune told the other day. Yeah, mine, I have kids. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, you you I don't like ramming religion down people's throats, but I, I do like to, to make them clear in their minds um, my beliefs. Otherwise, I would be fooling them. And the ways that we do this is to go around to the remand homes, the prisons. In fact, we go all over the country, but as I'm based in Bristol, I, I tend to spend most of my work inside Bristol. This one down town, it's good, good for us. We have to get out of Old Market. Mm -hmm. I'll try and do that. Lord, we have to. And you've got nothing else to do but just sit around Castle Green drinking? We do football. We do football? Yeah. What, with a cider? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you get kicked out of the ground? And they smuggle it in. I don't know if it's about that big, I know. How did you smuggle that in? I put you in a pants. Smuggle it in there. Take it in the corner of the water. That's just what You come where you're moving. Yeah. And then, <coughs> move one of the pants. Put it back. You walk through the shut out. And then lob it in there. And then you see him pants in there. Get put you in there. My dad had a bit of a reputation um, in East End of London. I used to quote his name to the police and get let off. And uh, I kind of got involved with lots of guys that were violent. And, you know, eventually I, I, I got in trouble with various types of police organisations of, of some sort. And the violence I was getting, I, I got the top of my finger sliced off and scars on my arms and things like that done by different knives and cutthroat razors. And uh, I thought that this was going to be life for me. And eventually I, I got involved with a group of Hell's Angels in the East of Milan, in Forest Gate, and I, I, I wore my hair really long, and uh, I had a big leather jacket with a death head on the back, and green band Hells Angels, and uh, all the Hells Angels signs. I tried my hardest to get spots on my face to look horrible, and, and uh, you know, basically look mean, go around with a bunch of guys that looked horrible as well. I carry a knife around in my pocket, ignition keys that fit most cars in the street, but I got caught. I got caught for housebreaking. Um, I got caught for nicking motorbikes, you know, I got the book thrown at me, and uh, for being in possession of these offensive weapons. You mean to tell me that you became a skinhead just because of your brothers? No, one of my brothers was skinhead, but he's doing all right now, he's got long hair and everything, and my mate started shooting their eggs, so I um, mm -hmm. feed mine, and then started wearing boots when I was young. Mm -hmm. It carried on like that, the people giving me boots. You see, I remember it the first time round. I, I used to be a skinhead in the 60s, Dr. Martins and that, and then I got converted over to being an Angel. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I mean, I've been here that long. I mean, I know, I know what it is, but I had to identify with something. The Bible pusher and turn off. That's right. Um, in fact, if somebody really doesn't want to listen, then I won't push them. It's as simple as that. I'll just walk away and just say, well, God bless you, you know. Um, but if ever you want to ring me, I'm there. I mean, you get called all sorts of names. And um, people think that being a Christian is all glamour and everything is great. But it isn't. It's very difficult um, at times. But there is a God there that helps. Um, helps me and help, I believe would help anybody um, if they ask for it. If they don't want to know, like some of the people that you... you, you find. Not intended for transport purposes. This bus is a mobile coffee bar manned by a team of counsellors for part of an outreach project set up to make help to the needy. The idea behind the outreach project is that by taking their bus onto the streets, Trained counsellors can get to people who can't get to them. Organisers say many people, both old and young, are in need of help, but are either scared to ask or don't know who to go to. Hey, kids, we're up on board. Come on in. The bus tours Luton's most deprived areas day and night. The project claims there's a desperate need, especially among young people, who welcome a free cup of coffee and a chat. I think it's a really good idea. And um, people like... Um, the people that you're helping to shoot the bus with really need it. It's good. Because then the children, they come and they come on and they have fun. It's just like, it's a good community in that lot. People can come here and talk in that lot and have fun talking and everything. It's not just aimed at the young. All ages welcome a bit of tea and sympathy. Yeah, loneliness is, is a big problem too. As well as a sympathetic ear, people are put in touch with organisations which can help. Problems range from homelessness to drug abuse and prostitution. The scheme was started by an unlikely looking vicar, the Reverend Cliff Mead. And although run by a local church, he claims it's not there to preach, only to help people. We're involved as a church um, in many community projects either inside the church or outside the church. This is just another part where we can go out to them rather than say to them, you know, come to us. Now, tea and sympathy is nothing new, is it? People no. in the past would go around to their friends' houses. Isn't it sad that now they can't do that, they have to come to the bus? Absolutely. It is, a, it is sad. Um, but this is just another area, again. We've got a, a coffee bar that runs on a Wednesday in our church, um, but that's static. It's actually at the church we have to invite people into it. This is just a, an area where we're going out on the street. I mean, for instance, if um, Jesus Christ was alive in the flesh um, today, he went into the marketplaces 2,000 years ago. And uh, we're just doing, you know, with a bus, the same as what he did when he was uh, actually in the, in the flesh on earth. Um, we're just trying to reach people where they are, build up relationships with them, 